Okay, again, good morning to everyone. Uh, introduction to biomedical engineering session. Today, we are going to introduce uh, about the application of sensors yeah, for biomedical system, or biomedical sensor. So, uh, if we see from many biomedical installation, we for diagnostic or therapeutic that they should have some form of device that translates the biomedical signal into electronic signal, especially in these modern days. In the previous era, before computer was invented or before electronics was found, mostly are done using mechanical devices, yeah, like the, the preliminary device before stethoscope, they use this kind of tube, yeah. wooden tube, and using that device, the physician immediately hears a bioacoustic signal from the chest or from the stomach to, uh, to predict the condition of the patient. Before it was invented, that stethoscope, yeah, the brain from a stethoscope was invented by Dr. Lineck, yeah, a French physician. Before that, physician usually use their own sensors. Yeah. So their own sensors means their own human sense like hands or ears to listen to the bioacoustical signal or biomechanical signal. Uh, they hear using their sound uh, or they tap into the into the patient's body to know the hardness of certain tissue. And then from there, they give the prognosis and diagnostic diagnosis of the patient's condition. But of course, that this um, with even using hands or using something which is not electronics, it's very difficult to record. It's very difficult to record so that then the measurement is often also not uh, not repeatable. The measurements are not repeat, repeatable and then very difficult to interpret later. So the physician has to conduct his diagnostic at that moment and very difficult to consult with other physicians afterwards. So with the advent of electronics, signals, physical signals, biochemical signals can be converted or transformed into electronic signal. And then either recorded as it is in the paper, for example, using another an actuator like uh, ink, uh, ink and pen, yeah, sharp, sharp pen, and then recording it on paper. Or then later, even further advanced, with the advent, with the invention of bio, now with the invention of computers in the mid of 20th century, this electronic signal can be further converted into digital electronic signal and then stored, or uh, being reproduced in various form, either as a graph in the screen or, or print, still printed in the paper, recorded as data in hard disk or any other memory storage or even transmitted to long distance uh, transmission yeah, in wireless transmission or wire transmission and transferred into a physician or somewhere someone else's in the other part of the world to be interpreted so in any cases of this diagnostic devices <clears throat> they cannot work without a sensor in their uh, front end of the signal processing. So the sensors acts as a window, yeah, as the window of that instrumentation to the signal coming, for the signal from coming from the body. The sensor convert any biomedical signal into electronic signal. Yeah, so for example, here in this this slide, I uh, obtained from Dr. Safika Saidin, my previous colleague, uh, colleague in University Technology Malaysia, where I thought I used to teach before. So she was kind enough to lend me a slide yeah, as a tool to teach this, this uh, topic on sensor for biomedical system. So the credit of the presentation material is from her. So for example, like these are various signal within our body yeah, can be measured, for example, insulin pump system. If they need to measure 
the glucose in blood continuously. So this needs some sensor also, biochemical sensor to measure the blood glucose level. Vita sign monitoring needs some form, form of sensors to measure, for example, the blood pressure, the heart beat, the ECG, electrocardiographic signal, etc. Movement recognition also needs some accelerometer, a sensor that is used to measure the acceleration of the human body or acceleration of several parts of the body. Needs maybe also a gyroscope yeah, to measure the rotation, rotational motion of the uh, body parts relative to each other, etc. etc. So we are going to make, uh, we are not going to into the details of these sensors. So you will be learning this again in semester four in the sensors and measurement uh, subject. But here we are going to overview in a glance quickly. Yes, some several types of sensors. Usually later we divide types of sensor based on the um, the physical parameters, especially electrical parameters that the biomedical signal is converted into. So for example, we will be learning about resistive transducer in which the physical parameter being measured is converted into resistance change. And then the resistance change is further converted or transduced, we call it, into voltage. So voltage is usually the standard electrical parameters used in uh, electronic instrumentation, especially in biomedical instrumentation. Of course, there are many other forms of electrical parameters that can be used besides voltage. Among others is frequency. So frequency is recently uh, becomes more popular because then you do not need analog to digital converter. You, using frequency, so you convert immediately the analog parameter into frequency, yeah, frequency like pulses, the type, the number of pulses per second, for example. From from there, you can use counter, digital counter, then to measure that physical parameter based on the number of the signal per second, for example. Inductive transistor, on the other hand, uh, convert the physical parameters into uh, inductance, yeah, inductance which is related to the electromagnetic parameters of the induct in the. Uh, uh, inductive uh, component, yeah? then capacitive transistor convert the physical parameter from the body into capacitance change. Piezoelectric transistor convert immediately mechanical strain into voltage change. Yeah. So this is more straightforward before, towards uh, electronic signal processing on the later later stages of the electronic instrumentation. Then we have temperature transducer converting uh, this part is not categorized or classified based on the uh, con parameter conversion, but rather this is based on the parameter being measured. This temperature transducer measure temperature of the human body or any other objects and then convert it into usually could be resistance change in the case of thermistor can also be voltage or potential difference in the case of a thermocouple, for example. Then we have radiation thermometry. This is a type of uh, sensor that measure temperature based on the radiation emitted by that object, yeah, based on the black body uh, em emission law, the wind's law. So this is the application of which we see now, nowadays yeah, in, for screening uh, people. Uh, based on their temperature, body temperature in the screen by uh, measuring the body temperature, not without, without having to be in contact with the, the object, but rather from a uh, distance. Then fiber optic transducer, this is based on the material being used to detect. So this uses fiber optic uh, material, <coughs> uh, fiber optic device, yeah, uh, using light. Fiber optic is basically a light conductor, so similar like wire for the electronic, but this is a wire, but for light to try to be able to propagate through it. Uh, if besides that, we are going to learn the general to overview, not learning in detail, but overview of some sensor terminology and uh, transducer in general. Okay. 
So sensors basically is a type of transducer. What is transducer? As the name implies, transducer is a device that converts a signal from one physical do uh, from one domain to another domain of energy. Yeah, it can be physical domain to another physical domain, but also biological domain to physical domain, quite chemical domain to chemi uh, physical domain, chemical domain to physical domain. And you see the the conversion is to electricity yeah, to electronics if it is sensor. Another type of transducer convert the electrical domain into the physical domain, which we call as actuator, like lamp, your monitor, basically is an actuator because it converts the electronic signal from the computer into readable information in the screen, for example. Okay, so <clears throat> transducer yeah, here, as we have uh, discussed, a device that converts from any form of energy to an electrical energy for the purpose of measurement or control. And the primary forms here, primary form is the energy to be converted, can be in the form of mechanical, thermal, electromagnetic, optical, chemical, etc. Then it is usually converted into electrical energy. So um, when it is the transducer is a sensor, then it detects the or measure stimulus in so it's not just what we want to, to to detect here is the signal or stimulus signal can can be defined yeah, as yeah, signal a form of energy that has meaningful information here the word meaningful yeah so this is to differentiate it from noise for example noise is actually contains some information but it doesn't have meaning in most of the cases in most of the cases we want to get rid of noise okay that because noises usually are random and random coming from the temperature surrounding temperature surrounding uh, undesirable motion etc etc so this is then the transistor that is called as sensor. But when it doesn't have any information at all, we call it more or less more as general transistor. For example, let's say what can be a generate uh, turbine, for example, or electric generator. Okay, electric generator. Electric generator converts motion, okay, movement into electric energy. Okay, but we don't really care how whether that electrical energy has meaning or not what we care in electric uh, generator is that it convert as much as um, as much as the mechanical energy as much of mechanical energy into electrical energy so in in a uh, transistor like that yeah, electric generator for example we only care about quantity of energy right quantity of energy the electric generator from mechanical into electric transform into electrical energy however in sensor for example also let's say motion into electric energy domain for example what can we say uh, motion sensor like a potentiometer, a potentiometer convert motion, rotational motion in the case of a rotational potentiometer. Potentiometer is basically a variable resistor or linear motion into also resistance change. Then we, based on that linear change, we want to, we want to know the motion, the displacement, right? So in the case of in the case of potentiometer, for example, which we use it as a sensor, potentiometer, we want to convert displacement, yeah, mechanical displacement, which is an information, into uh, resistance in this case, yeah, resistance change. So this, what we want to see is not the quantity of energy per se, 
the amount of the energy per se, but the meaning of that energy. The meaning of that energy is the quality of the energy, which basically translated in different word is information. Okay, in in potentiometer, it is not infometer. It is called as information. The the quality of energy is information. Yeah. So mark this difference. Yeah. The quality of energy is information. How how is this being? How far is it being displaced relative to a certain standard? This quality of info, of energy, we call it as information. This is the difference. And then if it is functioning like that, a device that function to convert a physical parameter into energy, into electrical energy. But what we are concerned of is the quality of the of the energy. We call it as a sensor because it converts. Uh, it converts. <laughs> Uh, what it converts information in the physical energy domain into electrical energy domain. But what we are concerned of, quality. But if it converts similar energy, but what we are concerned is the quantity, then it is a transducer, just a normal transducer. Okay. If we, re we relate this with basic physics, so a general transducer like electric generator here is more concerned with the first law of thermodynamics. Well, this one potentiometer is with the second law of thermodynamics. I'm not sure if you learned it already from Patoni or not, yeah? the first law and second law. First law is about energy cannot be destroyed, nor can it be created, so energy preservation. The second one is that the, because the, 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 the about entropy, yeah, about entropy, the, the order how things are being are being arranged and it's a second law of energy but efficiency also yeah so uh, this is entropy entropy is related to information and what we are concerned of in sensor is this one the quality uh, entropy also okay but that is for uh, deep deeper discussion more for uh, fundamental uh, sensing science or fundamental uh, electrical and uh, uh, information science and theory, which we are not going to dig to uh, dig too much detail. Also, throughout the, the, the biomedical engineering program, no? we are more of engineering part, so we are going to use it for application implementation. So, actuator is basically the opposite of sensor when it converts uh, electrical signal into a device. Uh, sorry, into a mechanical or into other forms of signal. For example, loudspeaker. Loudspeaker, loudspeaker converts your speaker in your phone, in your mobile phone, as well as in the computer, converts electrical energy, electrical signal that uh, encode your sound or the sound information, then convert it into physical signal. It becomes into real sound, which you can hear, okay? So like my voice now, first is converted by the microphone, which is a sensor into electrical signal in the computer, in my computer, transmitted throughout the telecommunication channel, internet. Yeah. And then in your computer, it is converted back by an actuator. In this case, the loudspeaker or speaker for short in your computer or your phone into sound, into voice. Uh, so, uh, the study of information theory, for example, study how how is my in the information is being preserved from this original voice of mine into the voice heard by you, yeah, in your personal computer on your smartphone. Okay. But we are not going to detail into the theory of that. We are going to basically apply it or implement the sensors and actuators into biomedical diagnostic or biomedical therapeutics. Any questions so far? Okay, we've got this definition, basic definition, yeah? So actuators is the uh, the opposite of uh, sensor, basically, from 
from real world to intelligent feedback system, basically now in the case in the in the current uh, time is basically the computer. It is the function of sensor. Then from the intelligent feedback system to the real world is the role of actuators. Okay, so let's go further now. I need to clear all the drawing. Okay, this sensor error force. Maybe we don't need to 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 explain it in detail now. Basically, it's the error in the reading of the sensor itself. Yeah, it could be from due to the insertion or due to the application, yeah, cause incorrect measurement, etc. And it can be classified as the characteristic error, the error within the sensor itself. Dynamic error, this is more related to the dynamic response of the, 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 the sensor, like response time, distortion, phase distortion. Environmental error, errors that come from the surrounding environment in which the sensor is being used. Then sensitivity here, some sensor terminology, right, like, which we will learn later. Sensitivity, the smallest vario, variation of, our, uh, of our parameter that can be accurately uh, measured too. I have a different kind of uh, definition in here. Yeah? The, my definition is not this, this one in my, or any other definition, this is called as a resolution rather than sensitivity. So sensitivity in my case, if we have later calibration curve, where X is the, the variable that we measure and Y is the reading that we obtain from the sensor. And then usually we draw a calibration curve. Then sensitivity is defined as, as the gradient of this calibration curve, yeah? delta Y divided by delta X. Or if it is linear, S could also be at one particular point, the derivative of, of this graph, yeah, the, the, the dy, dx, okay, by dx. So it can be in words, it can be said as uh, the smallest variation of the reading, yeah, smallest variation of the reading from, because dy, uh, uh, that can be read based on the change in the parameter that is measured. Okay, that is the definition of sensitivity from my perspective, from my definition, as, as well as many others, based on this gradient rather than this one. Resolution is something else. Resolution is really the actual, this is resolution, yeah? this, 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 by this definition in word, the smallest variation of variable or parameter, this one, delta x or dx, that can be still accurately measured. That is resolution. There is a special way to measure resolution later. I will explain, or maybe later you will learn it also in semester four in the sensor and measurement subject. Okay, then. Hmm. Sensitivity drift. This is the slope changes uh, because of some interfering input. Yeah, so instead of uh, having constant slope, like I was drawing before, the slope changes, for example, due to temperature, due to the pressure, humidity, etc. So the range here is the usable reading from the smallest expected value to the variable, to the largest value that of the variable that we can measure. So in the previous example of the graph that I draw, from the zero, uh, not necessarily from zero, sometimes can be from negative until whatever value it is. So this is called as range. Precision is then the degree of reproducibility of a measurement. Yeah. Then we have resolution, ah, this one, right? The smallest detectable incremental change of input parameter that can be detected in the output signal. This is called as resolution. The smallest delta x in the calibration chart that can be detected it can result in detectable output. This is resolution. Accuracy is the maximum difference between the actual value and the indicated value of the sensor output. 
So for example, if we again have calibrated, so this is the input, the signal that we want to measure, we convert into electrical signal, for example, and then the response is voltage. And we draw the, the calibration chart, for example, like this. Okay. So usually calibration is done at several points, at minimum three points, but it's better more than three points. Okay. So accuracy, and then this is what we have. Okay. Like some of this is what we have. This is the actual measurement value. Usually it is also done in triple, at least triple measurement. So then we can draw it based on the average and the standard deviation. The bar, vertical bar here shows the variation in the measurement value. Then also at the zero level, at the background level. Then for example, we have a sample, then we validate it. We do, we do validation with an unknown standard. For example, the unknown standard, we unknown standard, we measure using two different methods. The first one is the sensor that we calibrate. The second one is using a more standardized method to measure with higher accuracy yeah, with different instrument, instrument, for example, which we know that it can measure in more accuracy, more precision. Then, for example, in this part, okay? And somehow then, okay, uh, However, then the measurement shows instead, for example, is here, is here, which if relate with the X, it shows this value, this measurement of X. Well, the actual value of the that unknown standard is this one, yeah, XA. So the accuracy shows this maximum difference, yeah, X, XA minus XC. This is the error divided by the x a x actual. Okay, this is the, so indicating the accuracy. So one minus x c, one minus x c per x a multiplied by one hundred percent. You see, we 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 indicated in percentage. That is accuracy. Offset is the output that will exist when the when it should be zero. So uh, offset is shows in this value. If the reading in the, when X is zero, the reading in Y shows also zero, then the offset is zero. But if for example, it indicates this value instead, so then the, the, the calibration curve is like this, it means this one becomes the offset. Okay, this one is the offset. Yeah. Which we don't like it in measurement. Usually we don't like. We don't want. We want to nullify the offset. We want the offset to be zero. So linearity is the degree to which the output variation of an instrument follow input variations, refer as to the linearity of device. Basically, it means when mathematically is when the calibration chart can be expressed as y equal to be mx plus b. So b here will be the offset. Yeah. If it is can be how close it is to this linear equation. Usually that's why you, if you do it in Excel, uh, there is a, what do you call it? Coefficient of correlation. Uh, the parameter, the other parameter. Yeah. I forgot what is the name, yeah, S or something like that. Yeah. When it is close to one, it means when you, 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 you approach a certain curve with linear regression, okay? Then how the, the variable, the coefficient, the linearity coefficient, when it is close to one, then it means it's more linear. But when it is far from one, so when it's, let's say it is nine, 0 0.99, 0 0.95, usually above 0 0.9, then we can consider that the correlation between the X and Y at that sensor is linear. But if it is less than 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, then we know that it is not that linear. Yeah, for example, when the graph is like this, okay, and yeah, then when you approach using linear regression, yeah, oh, maybe you will approach like this, okay, then this, the coefficient will not be close to one. 
then instead what you need to do is you have to approach it using different region if you wanted to approach it as a linear like this and then it's two region for example two region two linear regions or you approach it using non-linear regression as a sigmoid function for example or logarithmic function etc okay any questions so far okay so i set this and then clear the drawing Hysteresis is the measurement of changes of the input parameter, regardless of in which direction the change is made. Later, we will see the graph on the next page. Response time, this is more of dynamic uh, case. The time required for a sensor to change output from its previous state to a settle, uh, to final settle value. So usually a sensor cannot follow the input. Its reading cannot follow the input immediately. It takes some time before it uh, has a steady state value we call it so the time to reach you can define it as 90 percent of the steady state value or 670 percent or 63 percent that is called as the response time so it is more of dynamic uh, characteristic of the sensor if you want to measure a biomedical signal bio signal which is very fast like eeg electroencephalography the signal of the brain then you have to use very fast sensor which means the response time has to be very small. It has to, to have a quick response time. But if you measure, for example, blood pressure, uh, let's say not blood pressure, let's say blood pressure something else, body temperature. Okay, body temperature varies very slowly with time. Okay, you cannot your temperature body temperature cannot change immediately from 37 degrees to 40 degrees, for example, within one second. No, it takes some time, right? Then your the response time of your instrument, like your thermometer, body tem thermometer, does not have to be very quick. It can be very slow. So because uh, the response the response time can be quite large, it's no problem because the bio signal to be measured in this case body temperatures change also slowly. Okay. So this is some uh, description of what I have just explained in the graph. So the uh, the here we have. The calibration chart yeah this part the ideal curve so the sensitivity is defined mathematically as the gradient of this chart delta y divided by delta x so if it is completely linear then sensitivity will be the same throughout its dynamic range and here the dynamic range is the measurement of the output value or the input the range between the smallest input to the highest input but when the calibration curve is not linear is not single line here for example parabolic or a cubic or quadratic or sigmoid then you have different sensitivity at different measurement range so in this case then you have to be very careful and you have to make derivative at one uh, at which point so the sensitivity will differ from that point to the other points within the calibration chart so when this curve drift, yeah, it's what we call as sensitivity drift. When it becomes, it has different gradient, then it has a sensitivity error. Hysteresis like this. So when you measure from by increasing the uh, measured parameter from zero to a certain value, for example, this is the response of the sensor uh, of the sensor, like this. Yeah. Then you decrease the value, the measured value, the, the, the measured parameter. Then the response of the sensor is does not follow the same path as this red one, but instead it goes through the upper green part. Then go, go into the negative region through this blue path, blue line. After this value, you increase again. Then it doesn't go immediately to the zero as before, but rather goes through this green path like this. This is what we call hysteresis usually in the magnetic sensors or magnetic induction or magnetic core, we have this in that hysteresis, but also in other parts of sensors like eddy current sensor, etc. The hysteresis is due to energy loss. Energy is not preserved in that sensor. But some energy is lost as a thermal, for example. Then we have different values between the when we increase the value, the measurement, the, the measured value, and when we decrease it. So we have different measurement Value. So this has to be taken into account during measurement so that what we measure is really accurate.
accurate. Okay, uh, uh, we will continue again in the second session. Uh, so we will pause record recording for now or stop recording for the.